Hey guys, welcome to ITS Tactical. We're here again with Mike Ritland of Tricos International and the Warrior Dog Foundation, and we're going to talk a little today about canine nutrition. So, want to kind of demonstrate what you got here, Mike, and as well as your thoughts on on the matter? Sure. Uh, thanks for having me. I uh, appreciate you guys coming out. A um, co couple things I wanted to discuss is uh, you know canine nutrition as a whole. Uh, as it pertains to everybody's dog, uh, not necessarily just working dogs. It can be, uh, you know, pets, uh, search and rescue dogs, active companions, etc. Uh, there's there's really no breed of dog that this doesn't apply to, and that um, you know nutrition, not unlike uh, as it pertains to us, is uh, extremely important when it comes to dogs and, and their general well-being. Um, you know, a quick look inside of a, of a dog's mouth tells you that that they are in fact carnivores. Um, you know, all of their teeth are, are spikes or sh uh, serrated diamonds and they are, are set up to be uh, meat eaters. And so one of the big problems that you see with uh, some of the, the diets today is that they're, they're either based with, um, with corn or soy or, or wheat or uh, some sort of, of plant material that uh, frankly is not, not designed to, to be fed to a dog. Uh, you know, dogs have been around for thousands of years uh, at a minimum, and dry dog food has been around for you know 50 or 60 years, and so uh, it's not really a, a compatible uh, you know way to feed a dog. Yet uh, it's convenient, and most people do it. Um, all all dog food, dry dog food, looks uh, you know relatively similar in that um, you know it's small pellets or kibble. Um, it's not. Uh, very perishable in terms of shelf life. Uh, you know, you can you can have dry dog food, and um, it can sit in a, a 90 degree uh, room for 12 months and not go bad. Uh, that right there should tell you that it's not exactly a, a, a great thing to be feeding in terms of, of minimal processing. Um, you drew the comparison between human beings being able to survive off beef jerky and canned food and. Um, it's kind of the same thing, right? Absolutely. You know, if uh, you know, we, we can live off of nothing but processed foods, uh, i.e., canned goods, beef jerky, uh, MREs, um, you know, MREs or uh, you know things out of a box, you know, chips or crackers or uh, you know pasta or, or whatever. You you can live off of that, uh, but it's not ideal. You know, our bodies are not designed to eat nothing but that. Uh, and similarly with dogs, their their genetic makeup is not designed to eat dry dog food either. Um, there are some better choices out there in terms of dry dog food if, uh, you know, if you have to feed it or you refuse to feed anything else. At a minimum you should go with, uh, you know, meat being the first ingredient and stay away from anything with corn, anything with wheat, anything with soy, uh, glutens in any form, uh, beet pulp. You know, those are things that, uh, that you don't want to see in, in your ingredient list in a dry food. But again, uh, even the very best dry food uh, pales in comparison to, to raw food. Some examples of raw food, kind of the next, next uh, up on the chain is, is Bill Jack Frozen. Uh, a lot of different grocers, freezers uh, carry this stuff. Um, it comes frozen, you thaw it out. Uh, it's very malleable. Uh, I use a lot of this stuff for, for training. Uh, to supplement food occasionally if it's getting dogs to eat uh, or uh, maybe trying to put some weight on a dog or something like that. But primarily I use it, uh, I use it for training and, and uh, it's a good healthy alternative to biscuits or liver treats or, or things that have a lot of chemicals and processing and preservatives in them uh, you know, that, that again aren't ideal for dogs. The amount of training that I do day in and day out uh, you know, I feed a lot of dogs through through training, and so uh, Bill Jack offers a, a very good alternative to uh, you know using some of the more uh, highly processed treats and uh, and training rewards. So this is uh, again Bill Jack Frozen is is something that I, I use a lot of. In terms of uh, you know an ideal scenario for um, you know a staple diet for dogs, uh, this stuff uh, this is a performance dog blend. Uh, and it's from a company called uh, Tefco, and their, their website is raisapawforraw.com. Uh, they have a lot of different uh, blends. Uh, you can get uh, just about whatever you want. Um, you can get meaty bones, you can get um, you know, different uh, oxtail and, and organ meats and uh, all sorts of different blends. You can get straight beef or straight tripe or, or et cetera. This has beef, uh, tripe, trachea, um, Trace, trace minerals and nutrients, egg, it has ground bone in it, 
um, you know, it's, it's a very, very complete diet. Uh, and I'm actually working with them uh, right now to develop a, a trico specific blend for, for our dogs. It'll be, uh, you know, a little bit different variant uh, in terms of the, the analysis and the ingredients, but it'll be, um, you know, a little more geared towards what, what we uh, need out of our dogs and what we uh, are, are looking to feed them. So uh, be looking for that in the future. But, um, you know, the, the nice thing about these diets is that uh, they are, are biologically very complete uh, in terms of what the dog needs. And again, it's not even necessarily for uh, just for working dogs, it's for, for pets or active companions or, or whatever. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, when they're on this type of food, uh, you know, their teeth are clean. Um, you know, any dry food is akin to us eating, uh, you know, Triscuits and Ritz crackers. You know, it's, it's going to stick to your teeth. You know, there's a lot of mar good marketing out there that says, oh, this is a, a anti-plaque formula, et cetera. All it is is good marketing. Uh, no dry food is really good for dogs' teeth. It sticks to it. It creates plaque, uh, and it, draw, it also draws a lot of water out of your dog. The higher the protein, the more water it's going to draw out of your dog, which is uh, especially in, in these summertime months here in Texas where it's hot, um, that can be can be detrimental. You were saying higher protein blends are somewhat toxic, almost, right? Like thirty six percentage. And I, I, I uh, yes, I, I believe that to be the case. Yeah. Um, I've tried a lot of different uh, dry foods. I've tried a lot of different raw foods. You know what I can tell you from the the higher the protein, um, the harder it is on their kidneys. Uh, the more water that, that it draws out of the dog, which in turn requires the dog to, to take in more water. Uh, you'll notice that dogs drink more, they urinate more, uh, their urine's typically darker. Um, it's just, it, it's hard on them. Because tissue is uh, three quarters uh, moisture, uh, feeding raw food, dogs take in a lot, a lot less water, it's a lot less hard on their kidneys, uh, and it's just better across the board. So, uh, you know, the raw stuff is, uh, it's just without a doubt, um, you know, the best way to feed your dog. Yeah. Um, so another thing we're going to do today is do some bite work, right? Um, Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that we, we do with our dogs here is, is, is we work them a lot. We do detection, we do apprehension or bite work, uh, we do obedience training, we do personal protection stuff. Uh, no different than with human beings, you know, all of our, uh, our military service members, our police officers, our firefighters, professional athletes, etc. Uh, you know their their job, and, and in in occupations where uh, you know your your physical fitness may be the difference between life and death. Uh, obviously, being in the best physical shape possible is uh, is is of paramount importance. And so, um, you know, f this this style of feeding dogs um, absolutely augments our ability to keep the dogs in better shape. One of the things that I want to demonstrate is a dog that's fed uh, you know diets like this that's kept uh, you know. Uh, at an optimum body composition in terms of, you know, you can see a little tuck in his stomach. Uh, you know, he's not overweight, he's nice and trim, uh, he's well conditioned, he's fed this type of diet. Even in this heat, uh, to be able to see his speed and athleticism and, and body strength and, and his ability to take down, you know, a human being who's three, four, five times his size uh, at the speeds and, and efficacy that he's able to do it uh, is, is truly impressive. And, and I want to, uh, you know, to, for people to be able to see, uh, see what that looks like. And, and see that capability and, and tie that into to how important it is to feed to feed our dogs. No different than uh, you know professional athletes or, or military guys or whatever. Uh, you know we can live off McDonald's and beef jerky and et cetera. But uh, you know if if, if our livelihood and, and our uh, our ability to defend ourselves et cetera, um, you know is is contingent on on our health and well-being, then um, you know we we take that very seriously and. And we do so with our dogs here also. Absolutely. Well, let's get to some bite work, man. All right. All right.
All right, Mike. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes yeah. to talk with us. Um, you guys make sure you check out warriordogfoundation.org as well as tricos.com uh, for more information on what Mike's doing. And along those lines, I know you're working on some new stuff. Do you want to kind of share that too? Sure. Um, the book Navy Seal Dogs, uh, which is a, a re-adaptation of uh, Trident Canine Warriors. Uh, it's a scholastic book program. Uh, so it's it's basically formatted for uh, young adults or children. Uh, comes out October 31st. Um, so be on the lookout for that. And then uh, next year, I'm working on a training book right now that we'll talk about uh, kind of in the weeds of nutrition and training and reinforcement and bond and relationship and consistency and the you know all the different aspects of of training. And again, it's from your most basic level all the way up to uh, you know, tier one dog units. It's all the principles apply to, to everybody. Essentially, I, I don't have a name for that yet, nor a release date, uh, but it'll it'll be out uh, sometime in 2014. Very so. cool. Well, thanks, Mike. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Thanks for watching, guys.